What's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fusion 360 tips and tricks tutorial. For those of you who don't know, my name is Adam James and I studied plastics and composites engineering, have years of experience with 3D printers, injection molding machines, and CAD engineering software. In this episode, we're going to understand why the Fusion 360 history timeline sometimes doesn't show. This is a Fusion 360 forum topic that I found. It's got about 80,000 views, so I figured it's probably worth a quick video demonstration outlining A, a workflow, and B, uh, a solution that we can follow, kind of piggybacking off of one of my STL videos that I did a few weeks back, and hopefully creating a workflow that works well for the community, right? Uh, so with that being said, let's jump over to the Fusion 360 forms and see what we can find. So as we are scrolling down through the forms here, we find this History Timeline Not Showing by T.D. Cambridge uh, with 80,000 views. So, of course, this uh, must be pretty popular. This was posted in 2015, so it's been a little while. Uh, so I'm sure the user interface has changed. There's been quite a bit of bugs and updates. So we'll see if this is even... Uh, worth noting a solution to. Um, and if there isn't a solution five years later, then that's a bigger issue, right? Um, so TD Cambridge says, uh, hi, I am sure I am missing something obvious, but the timeline isn't showing up in Mac Ultimate. See, I don't even know what Mac Ultimate is actually. It's probably so old that I've never heard of it. Uh, I do have redo undo arrows with a pull down history, but no timeline on the bottom. Okay, so that's key. So there's no timeline. If I make a new drawing, the timeline shows up now. So I guess no timeline if you're editing an imported STL. It's better to just paste said STL into a new drawing after importing to get the timeline. Hmm. That seems like an interesting workflow to get the timeline to show. For those of you that maybe are new to Fusion 360, the timeline is essentially, uh, if you're a SolidWorks user, it's essentially the history of the features that you can go back to and edit and modify. And because Fusion 360 is parametric, uh, the features that are later within that timeline get updated as a result. So it's a way that you can go back and edit features uh, within the CAD software user interface. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and see if we can replicate this issue. So I already created a history timeline not showing YouTube project folder and named this import from mesh. So if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that to import an STL file in Fusion 360, you're going to want to go to insert, insert mesh, and then grab your STL file. I'm just going to use this doc test. This is a quick um, design that I whipped up for AirPods Pro and Apple Watch. If you're interested in that, maybe I can make a video later down the line. But um, so here it is. And as we can see, there is a timeline at the bottom. Uh, and just to double check, we'll start kind of sketching in here. I'll just uh, click on sketch, uh, click on a plane, left click, C for circle, click on the origin here, just oh, C for circle, click on the origin here, let's just make a big circle, click finish. And then if we are, so the sketch is in the timeline, right? So let, let's just extrude this, pull this up maybe 10 millimeters and we're there so so let's see if we can go in the timeline here right click on this edit sketch and well I'm just gonna manually kind of drag and uh, play with this feature by holding the left mouse button finish sketch and it updated so this is parametrically updating um, so no issues there uh, and we just followed the simple workflow that I outlined in my previous video to correctly import a mesh. So it looks like by going to insert, insert mesh, uh, not only do you get correct geometric dimensions, but uh, your timeline shows up at the bottom. So that's good. So let's say you import a more traditional way or you just go to the top left of the user interface like this and you go upload, um, select file, 
Again, doc test one STL, same file, different method of opening the file. Okay, so it says it's complete. Let's go into our data panel here, double click on doc test one. Well, not only, okay, so first off, there's not only does, <laughs> when importing it, it looks really bad for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure why some of these triangles are so coarse uh, and others aren't. Uh, that's interesting. But aside from that, there is no timeline still. Uh, there, There's no timeline. So that's interesting. So if I say create a sketch which has nothing to do with the dock itself um we'll just left click on the front plane here uh let's switch it up a little bit i'm actually going to use a rectangle instead of a circle Woo! <laughs> uh finish sketch left click on the rectangle and let's just extrude it okay so we're we're working we're uh i mean it looks like we're you know extrude is there let's keep modifying this let's click on this top here we'll now use a circle C for circle um, finish let's maybe extrude this circle into here I don't know I'm just kind of playing around and then let's add some fillets on this as well just to make it look good and continue modifying a file as maybe we would uh, in real life. Okay, there we go. So we've got this thing, this modified piece of CAD here offset from this, uh, but there's still no timeline. So what I mean by that is what if I want to go back and uh, modify this diameter or the length of this extruded uh, feature uh, you can't um, and you may be saying well oh just go and right click on the fillet or the extrude but there's no sketches to edit this see we can go here say like edit sketch but it's not like there Like we edited the sketch, but it's not actually going to parametrically update uh, the refer the extruded reference of that sketch. Um, I hope that makes sense. But you see, we're able to play around with this, but this sketch has no relevance because there's no history, like there's no recorded history. This extrude doesn't know it's associated with this sketch which isn't good because we can't go back and modify it. What we have to do is delete this feature, then go back into here, then extrude it again, and now we can do it. So you can imagine that if you have a complex, say, for example, this dock, uh, if I started with just a base cylinder to begin with, uh, it'd be very hard to go back and modify all of this um, if there was no design history, if I needed to make small revisions or tweaks within the design here and there. So let's delete all of these. There is a solution um, to get that timeline to show up. Let's just delete all of uh, these. I probably could have control A selected, but oh well. Um, so your component, right click on it, and at the very bottom here, there's capture design history. And what that's going to do, it's going to pull up the uh, design history bar at the bottom here, uh, or the timeline history. And as you can see, when we go into here, see if your circle, it's starting to capture all of the sketches, all of the features. Let's even add a fillet. Just here is fine. Cool. So we've got this kind of bulk uh, 
piece of geometry that's offset from the dock itself. Um, and if I wanted to modify the diameter of this uh, extruded cylinder, I can left click, right click, edit sketch. Uh, I didn't define it, so I can just drag and drop. Finish sketch, and then it parametrically updates. So that's really cool, uh, and that's how it should be. That's how Fusion should be, and that's why it's so user friendly. Um, so, but it should be noted that it's kind of a warning sign, right? If the timeline isn't here, then maybe that's a warning that you didn't import the mesh correctly, right? So <laughs> by importing by insert mesh and then selecting your STL file, you're getting something that's geometrically correct. The timeline automatically populates and you're good to go. Um, so just another thing to take note of. Now let's go back to the form topic here. He says, or they say, if I make a new drawing, the timeline shows up. So I guess no timeline if you're editing an imported STL. Um, we didn't have to go and make a drawing for this workflow. So that could be an update in the user interface itself. But what I'm wondering is if we just kind of command Z all the way back before we captured the design history. Uh, let's see here. And we can't actually go that far. It's not going to let us. So let's let's import it again. Get a panel here. Doctest one. Surprising. It's using the same name. Okay, so there's no timeline here. Now let's do new drawing from design. This guy. We'll do okay. Remember, all these units are incorrect. So if we do a new drawing from this, um, it is going to be, of course, incorrect. The design contains neither solid bodies nor sketches. A drawing cannot be created. Huh. Uh, and we can't do mesh to B rep because we didn't import it correctly. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is an update uh, of the software within five years. Um, I don't think you have to go about creating a drawing uh, first. So in order for your design history to show up, import the mesh using the insert utility at the top right. You go insert, insert mesh, um, this is both for OBJs and STLs. Uh, not only will you get correct geometric dimensions, but your timeline will show up and you'll be able to modify things going forward. Short video this week, guys. Uh, again, trying to pump these out once a week. Uh, my time is limited, but uh, from some of the feedback I get from these videos, it seems like you guys are starting to enjoy them. So that helps me stay motivated. Uh, if you liked the content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.